Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so we are once again reading Al Frank Baum's The Wizard of Oz uh, with pictures by W. W. Dinslow, the original pictures. And we are on page 203. So last time, uh, the wizard left without her. Dorothy was stuck. They were trying to think of ways to get her home. The winged monkeys would not take her, right? So she can't use any more of the winged monkeys on the cap, right? Because you get three times to use them. So now, on page 203, we're going, they've decided that they're going to go south and see if Glinda, the good witch of the south, will help them, right? So, the next morning, Dorothy kissed the pretty little girl goodbye, Mwah, right? And they all shook hands with the soldier with the green whiskers who had walked with them as far as the gate. When the guardian of the gate saw them again, he wondered greatly that they could leave the beautiful city to get into new trouble. But he at once unlocked their spectacles, which he put back into the green box, and gave them many good wishes to carry with them. So there he is. You are now our ruler, he said to the scarecrow, so you must come back to us as soon as possible. I certainly shall if I am able, the scarecrow replied, but I must help help Dorothy get home first. As Dorothy bade the good-natured guardian a last farewell, she said, I have been very kindly treated in your lovely city, and everyone has been good to me. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. Don't try, my dear, he answered. We should like to keep you with us, but if it is your wish to return to Kansas, I hope you will find a way. He then opened the gate of the outer wall, and they walked forth and started upon their journey. The sun shone brightly as our friends turned their faces toward the land of the south. They were all in the best of spirits and laughed and chatted together. Dorothy was once more filled with the hope of getting home, and the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman were glad to be of use to her. As for the lion, he sniffed the fresh air with delight and whisked his tail from side to side in pure joy at being in the country again, while Toto ran around them and chased moths and butterflies, barking merrily all the time. City life does not agree with me at all, remarked the lion as they walked along at a brisk pace. I have lost much flesh since I lived there, and now I am anxious to show the other beasts how courageous I have grown. They now turned and took a last look at the Emerald City. All they could see was a mass of towers and steeples behind the green walls, and high up above everything, the spires and dome of the Palace of Oz. Oz was not such a bad wizard after all, said the Tin Woodman, as he felt his heart rattling around in his breast. He knew how to give me brains, and very good brains, too, said the Scarecrow. If Oz had taken a dose of the same courage he gave me, added the lion, he would have been a very brave man. Dorothy said nothing. Oz had not kept the promise he made her, but he had done his best, so she forgave him. As he said, he was a good man, even if he was a bad wizard. The first day's journey was through the green fields and bright flowers that stretched about the Emerald City on every side. They slept that night on the grass with nothing but the stars over them, and they rested very well indeed. In the morning, they traveled on until they came to a thick wood. There was no way of going around it, for it seemed to extend to the right and left as far as they could see. And besides, they did not dare change the direction of their journey for fear of getting lost. So, they looked for the place where, where it would be easiest to get into the forest. The scarecrow, who was in the lead, finally discovered a big tree with such wide spreading branches that there was room for the party to pass underneath. So he walked forward to the tree, but just as he came under the first branches, they bent down and twined around him, and the next minute he was raised from the ground and flung headlong among his fellow travelers. This did not hurt the scarecrow, but it surprised him, and he looked rather dizzy when Dorothy picked him up. Here's another space between the trees, called the lion. Let me try it at first, said the scarecrow, for it doesn't hurt me to get thrown about. He walked up to another tree as he spoke, but the branch, its branches immediately seized him and tossed him back again. This is strange, exclaimed Dorothy. What shall we do? The trees seem to have made up their minds to fight us and stop our journey, remarked the lion. I believe I will try it myself, said the woodman, and shouldering his axe, 
He marched up to the first tree that had handled the scarecrow so roughly. When a big branch went down to seize him, the woodman chopped at it so fiercely that he cut it in two. <gasps> at once the tree began shaking all of its branches as if in pain, and the tin woodman passed safely under it. Come on, he shouted to the others, be quick! They all ran forward and passed under the tree without injury except Toto, who was caught by a small branch and shaken until he howled. Oh! But the woodman promptly chopped off the branch and set the little dog free. The other trees of the forest did nothing to keep them back, so they made up their minds that the only the first row of trees could bend down their branches and that probably these were the policemen of the forest and given this wonderful power in order to keep strangers out of it. The four travelers walked with ease through the trees until they came to the further edge of the wood, when, to their surprise, they found before them a high wall which seemed to be made of white china. It was smooth like the surface of a dish and higher than their heads. What shall we do now? asked Dorothy. I will make a ladder, said the tin woodman, for we must certainly climb over the wall. We're going to keep reading the next chapter on page 209. While the tin woodman was making a ladder from wood, which he had found in the forest, Dorothy lay down and slept, for she was tired by the long walk. The lion also curled himself up to sleep, and Toto lay beside him. The scarecrow watched the woodman while he worked and said to him, I cannot think why this wall is here, nor what it is made of. Rest your brains and don't, do not worry about the wall, replied the woodman. When we have climbed over it, we shall know what is on the other side. After a time, the ladder was finished. It looked clumsy, but the tin woodman was sure it was strong and would answer their purpose. The scarecrow woke Dorothy and the lion and Toto and told them that the ladder was ready. The scarecrow climbed up the ladder first, but he was so awkward that Dorothy had to follow close behind to keep him from falling off. When he got his head over the top of the wall, the scarecrow said, Oh my! Go on! exclaimed Dorothy. So the scarecrow climbed further up and sat down on the top of the wall, and Dorothy put her head over and cried, Oh my! Just as the scarecrow had done. So here's the picture. And then Dorothy. What do you think Dorothy's seeing? So remember, it looks like it's made of some sort of glass, right? Surface of a dish. Dishes are made of what? Ceramic. Then Toto came up and immediately began to bark, but Dorothy made him be still. The lion climbed the ladder next, and the tin woodman came last, but both of them cried, Oh my! as soon as they looked over the wall. When they were all sitting in a row on the top of the wall, they looked down and saw a strange sight. Before them was a great stretch of country, having a floor as smooth and shining as white at the bottom of a big platter. Scattered a mound were many houses made entirely of china and painted in the brightest colors. These houses were quite small, the biggest of them reaching only as high as Dorothy's waist. There were also pretty little barns with china fences around them, and many cows and sheep and horses and pigs and chickens, all made of china, were standing about in groups. But the strangest of all were the people who lived in this queer country. There were milkmaids and shepherdesses with bright colored bodices and golden spots all over their gowns, and princesses with the most gorgeous frocks of silver and gold and purple, and shepherds dressed in knee breeches with pink and yellow and blue stripes down them, and golden buckles on their shoes, and princes with jeweled crowns on their heads, wearing ermine robes and satin doublets, and funny clowns in ruffled gowns with round red spots upon their cheeks and tall pointed caps. And strangest of all, these people were all made of china, even to their clothes, and were so small that the little of list, the tallest of them, was no higher than Dorothy's knee. No one did so much as look at the travelers at first, except one little purple china dog with an extra, extra large head, which came to the wall and barked at them in a tiny voice, afterwards running away again. How shall we get down? asked Dorothy. They found the ladder so heavy they could not pull it up. So the scarecrow fell off the wall and the others jumped down upon him so that the hard floor would not hurt their feet. Of course, they took pains not to light on his head and get the pins in their feet. 
When they were all safely down, they picked up the scarecrow, whose body was quite flattened out, and patted his straw into shape again. We must cross this strange place in order to get to the other side, said Dorothy, for it would be unwise of us to go any other way except due south. They began walking through the country of the China people, and the first thing they came to was a China milkmaid milking a China cow. As they drew near the cow, the cow suddenly gave a kick and kicked over the stool, the pail, and even the milkmaid herself, all falling on the china ground with a great clatter. Dorothy was shocked to see that the cow had broken her leg short off and that the pail was lying in several small pieces while the poor milkmaid had a nick in her right elbow. There, cried the milkmaid angrily, see what you've done. My cow has broken her leg and I must take her to the mender's shop and have it going on again. What do you mean by coming here and frightening my cow? I'm very sorry, returned Dorothy. Please forgive us. Milkmaid was much too vexed to make any answer. Vexed meaning angry. She picked up the leg sulkily and led her cow away, the poor animal limping on three legs. As she left them, the milkmaid cast many reproachful glances over her shoulder at the clumsy strangers holding her nicked elbow close to her side. Dorothy was quite grieved at this mishap. We must be very careful here, said the kind-hearted woodsman, or we may hurt these pretty little people, so they will never get over it. A little farther on, Dorothy met the most beautifully dressed young princess, who stopped short as she saw the strangers and started to run away. Dorothy wanted to see more of the princess, so she ran after her, but the china girl called out, Don't chase me! Don't chase me! She had such a frightened little voice that Dorothy stopped and said, why not? Because, answered the princess, also stopping a safe distance away. If I run, I may fall down and break myself. But couldn't you be mended? asked the girl. Oh, yes, but no one is ever so pretty after being mended, you know, replied the princess. I suppose not. Now there is Mr. Joker, one of our clowns, continued the china lady, who is always trying to stand up upon his head. He has broken himself so often that he is mended in a hundred places and doesn't look at all pretty. Here he comes now, so you can see for yourself. Indeed, a jolly little clown now came walking towards them, and Dorothy could see that in spite of his pretty clothes of red and yellow and green, he was completely covered with cracks, running every which way and showing plainly that he had been mended in many places. The clown put his hands in his pockets, and after puffing out his cheeks and nodding his head at him, saucily, his head at them saucily, he said, My lady fair, why do you stare at poor old Mr. Joker? You're quite as stiff and prim as if you'd eaten up a poker. Be quiet, sir, said the princess. Can't you see that these are strangers and should be treated with respect? Well, that's respect, I expect, declared the clown, and immediately stood upon his head. So there is the clown in the land of the China people, right? They are all made of china or glass. All right, guys, so we are on page 214, and that's going to be all for now. We'll pick up reading next time, reading The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. You thought the adventure was over, didn't you, after Dorothy uh, met the wizard and everything? Ah, more to come. Bye for now, guys.